Hi, this is Johnny Bergen with another Chicago Blues guitar lesson. This has been uh, something that a lot of folks have asked me about, so let's get into it. Lucky Lou by Jody Williams, the only real rival to Earl Hooker in terms of elegance, um, style, and uh, true guitar greatness of that era. So uh, crazy about Jody Williams. So. Yes, I am open E. That's the tuning that he used. Um, pretty much, I think, all the time, definitely on this song. Um, that's an E string. The E's the same. A's up a whole step to B. D string's up a whole step to E. And the G string is up a uh, half step to G sharp. Same, same. So you have an E chord without touching it. And, uh, you know, this has that talking guitar, like the real blues tradition of uh, making your instrument talk or make it laugh or cry. Or if you're Albert Collins, make it sound like you're starting a truck with it, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, it's a real, you know, it's a hallmark of black music. And um, anyway, it sounds like somebody kind of bursting into room and saying, what's up? Say what? You know, what's that? So, yeah, so this is in a C minor, C sharp minor, by the way. And we'll get to this chord in a second. But uh, the actual lick, um, that's it. He's going all the way up to the 13th fret. Now, it's standard tuning. It's going to be a little different, and uh, we'll get to standard tuning in a little bit, but uh, I'm having so much fun actually playing this in in uh, the tuning it was made in. It's, it actually really, really works, so. The very first one, he only goes up to the 12th fret. After that, he goes up to the 13th fret, as if to sort of up the ante a little bit. Ah. Everything's on the D and G strings. Ah, okay, let's try that again. He slides up to the 9th or 10th fret. Open. Up to the 13th fret G string. Open D and then... Okay, so the real thing is like... Once you slide up to the 13th fret of the G string, you just roll over to the D string. Oh, and then go back down the way you came. Open D string, and then the second fret. And then you have this kind of, you can strum it upside down to make it more, you know, mysterious as it is. You know, the song's very mysterious. It's like kind of a Twin Peaks kind of a song. So. D string, G. Roll down to the D, open, and then you have this bracket shape chord. It's like somewhere in mandolin chords. You could use these two fingers, you could use these two fingers, doesn't matter. Second fret A string, second fret B string. And there you go. And then everything's on the D string as you're going into the four chord. to the 10th and then 9th or there's different ways he plays that but I think it's 10 around 10 and 9 ah too much he uses his thumb all right so that's the way that rolls. You can use your thumb here. This is like kind of like a ninth, top of a ninth chord. Like here's the ninth shape that you guys all know, I'm sure. So I've got just this part. Nice chord. And then it actually goes to the five, but he doesn't usually play the five, and you don't have to, but somebody should, like the organ player or um, the rhythm guitar or whatever. So. Then 
it does that again because the form of this is two eight bar rumbas, two eight bar shuffles, two eight bar rumbas. There's a whole group of songs like this. Like one of my favorite ones is Cha 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 and Blues by Eddie C. Campbell, you know, All Your Love by Otis Rush, um, even Woke Up This Morning by B.B. King. Rumba shuffle, rumba shuffle, rumba shuffle. It was just kind of a thing that, uh, and I feel like all the guitar players of the day sort of had to weigh in with their takes on it. So, uh, but this is such a classy and interesting take on it. So let's say we did that part twice. Now here we are at the leads. You've been waiting and waiting, I'm sure. You know how I'm always saying and how people always tell you when you do these bends on the G string to get two fingers behind it, do with your third finger. Well, he gets kind of a distinctive sound from not doing that. That's very typical, like lead guitar, like T-Bone Walker and all that. Like that. That kind of thing. 12, 9, roll over to 9 on the B string. And then you just got to make an adjustment. Instead of doing all this stuff here that you do in standard tuning, and I hope I'm uh, staying on the mic um, first time using this setup. Instead of that, you have to just go backward one fret. Second finger makes the most sense on the 10th fret. Half step, unbend it while without picking it. Don't do that. Just go. Then st step back with your first finger. Eighth fret. And then here's your root. Yeah. And so that's the way you do this kind of thing. So here's the whole deal. Yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty. You got to... You got to just do a bend with your second finger on the 10th fret. And that's like a little tremble or something. Just a hammer on, pull off. The second one is the same thing, but a little more complicated. He's got a thing where he'll keep a pattern going on one string and then move it down to the next string. We're going to see that again. Then just do that shift down, you're here. If you fingered it standard tuning, it'd be like this. Uh, sorry, it's not going to sound the same, but that's where it looks like. Nah, too much vibrato. And that's typical BB style. You know, this kind of position, the D minor shape, like this. And he, I like the way they end with da da da. So or sometimes da da like or and then back you know and so on with your eight bars. So remember this is an eight bar form. And so let's get to the uh, the second the second solo now. Was a little messed up that's okay this is actually not it's pretty obvious in in uh, standard tuning or it would look like that like what i like uh magic sam doing what have i done wrong or or you know those kind of songs da, 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 like that but um instead you're going to take the same p pattern here 12 and 11 and then see how cool that sounds when you put it here 12 and 11 again two strings down G and B strings or B and G strings if you want to look at it that way
That's cool. It's it's very kind of he's just like playing cat and mouse with you a little bit. This is like a C minor arpeggio if you want C sharp minor arpeggio if you want to look at it that way. Second finger, fourteenth fret, B string, twelve, and that's way up here on the sixteenth. And then he does some amazing thing. This chromatic thing, it just like helps keep everything so like spooky and mysterious and trippy. It's like Something about that note, it makes it sound like the Twilight Zone or something. It's just great. Let's see if I can do the whole deal. want to because it's I should have talked about the form a bit but it's because it's four bars of a sharp minor. bar of the four minor and then notice how easy it is to make just a straight up major chord in uh, the open E tuning pretty great huh yeah now the last verse, I can't remember exactly right now, but it's really sort of a summation of all this stuff that he does. Um, he, he sort of repeats them all again. It just comes out a little different. building blocks so um yeah but uh, if you can really nail those first two solos then you are well on your way to uh getting this song down what i'm gonna do now is just grab another guitar and uh and play a bit of it in standard so you know um doing the actual lick is a good bit harder in standard because you have to you have to get this in there it's got to end that way or you could just change keys and do it in B and then you, you could play a, a, B, a B minor 7th chord there because it's a little tricky to jump into this C minor C sharp minor chord you could do that instead of or so it's gonna come out a little different it's not gonna be exactly the same you could do the open D string so it's not gonna be exactly the same it just can't be so anyway I think what you guys are probably more worried about is like how do we get through the leads playing just a regular guitar because I don't want to change it and I don't want to relearn all this stuff and that kind of thing so all that stuff is the same right all that stuff is the same so this is very Magic Sammy it's just your uh, bar with a third Third finger on 12th fret, 11th fret, 10th fret. It's kind of easier in some ways. You could even do that. Sorry, here we go. That's, that's 9 and 11. Anyway, I'll just play it for a while. I'm going to try to bend it with no support there.
So it still works in open tuning, but it is pretty cool to do it in um in open E. And uh, have fun with this song. If you have some memories about Jody Williams, he is truly one of the all-time uh, greatest. So original, distinctive. And um, I think he picks down here a lot, real close to the bridge to get that tight, tense sound. Practice with that, see how that goes. But let me know your comments on Jody Williams. Join me on Patreon to help support these free lessons. And uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Tell your friends. Thanks a lot, and see you next time.